Welcome back. So I wanted to talk to you about um, lectins today. And you've probably heard about them. They're kind of the rage in nutrition, been that way for a while. And they tend to, I would say, make creating, implementing a results-driven nutrition plan really challenging. And this is because lectins are found um, and, and are loaded, actually, um, in a lot of whole foods, real food. And so, you know, people think I'm eating real food and then next, you know, they're being told don't eat those foods because they contain lectins. Um, but unfortunately, these, you know, these proteins we call lectins uh, that um, bind to carbohydrates and, you know, they, they instigate or promote uh, kind of the, the state of um, a leakiness in the gut. You may have heard that before, which uh, allows for undigested food particles to... Uh, enter into, into the bloodstream, even you know, intestinal bacteria to enter the bloodstream, toxic elements that are hanging out in our intestines to enter the bloodstream. And this can be really, really, really challenging if um, you know you have things like ulcerative colitis, you have Crohn's disease, you have allergies, autoimmune diseases, eczema, you know, different types of atopic dermatitis. Um, and then you know long term, excess of leakiness of the gut can lead to, you know, all kinds of uh, neurological issues and um, just an generally continually inflamed state of the body. Nobody wants that, right? So the dose though does make a difference. You know, we've heard of probably the, the dose makes the poison and that is definitely the case with lectins. Uh, many people do fantastic with some lectins, but they overstep, they'll you know, go over, over a little bit and man, here come the symptoms. Uh, so often step two, when I'm talking to patients who, you know, continue to deal with different inflammatory conditions and just don't seem like, you know, they're getting all over the top. Um, after I've tried to convince and, uh, or I say like inspire, um, a patient to eliminate processed foods and vegetable oils, those kind of things, uh, if they're still not getting the results that they need, uh, then I would often point them, um, to a low lectin food plan, uh, in most commonly when we're talking about low lectin foods, that's that's things like you know, soybeans, corn, any soy product, really any corn product, wheat products, peanuts, tomatoes, potatoes, um, the whole nightshade family. You know, it is true that many of these foods are loaded with nutrients. They are, there's no doubt about it. But unfortunately, as is the case with many of these high lectin foods, the nutrient load that they contain doesn't compensate for the excessive immune effect they have on, on the human body. Uh, and a majority of, pa of my patients, you know, you know, they don't have issues with tomatoes, peanuts, or potatoes, but a significant number of them have issues, and I would say radical issues, or you know, and, and notice radical benefit when they remove soy products and wheat products from their life entirely. And, and often it does take entire elimination to see benefits show up for a person. And I will say the, the packaging does matter when we're talking about lectins, we're talking about soy products. Uh, you know, when we talk about um, the, the dose making the, um, the poison, you know, for instance, if you already fermented organic soy products, there's, there's a lot of benefits to that. There's, there is a lot of benefits shown to eating fermented organic soy products, non-GMO soy products. However, you know, it's kind of hard to find uh, <laughs> fermented soy products. It's easy to find genetically modified, highly processed, you know, pseudo soy products. That's all over the place. That's like 95, 95% of our um, uh, gross domestic, uh, you know, soy production is is this G GMO pseudo soy product, which is it's not, it's not even soy. Uh, so fermenting soy, you know, it reduces lectin content by like 95%. Uh, and, and sprouting soy, this is talking about the packaging of, of these lectin um, foods, sprouting can de decrease lectin content by about 60%. So if you're going to consume soy, you gotta make sure one, it is organic, and two, it better be fermented. You know, like miso or tempeh, eating all that tofu, eating all that, you know, that soy protein isolate, it's not gonna work out very well. You know, especially if you're a male, you know, I, and I'm a female too, but I mean, yeah, really, if you're a male or a female, I would be watching how much soy I intake and because it can really make it make a, a deleterious effect on your testosterone and estrogen um, hormonal balance. And nobody wants that. Who wants to have to mess with their hormones just by because of food that they're consuming? So I would also like to note that 
though it is often promoted that soy is consumed, you know, just ravenously massive dosing of it in uh, Asian cultures, East Asian cultures. This, this actually is not accurate at all. Uh, you know, the average soy intake in East Asian populations is really only around like one and a half to, to like three ounces a day total, like the entire day. That's not per meal. So, you know, consider that, um, you know, countless companies, uh, and, um, uh, you know, vegan bloggers and these kind of stuff, you know, they're, they're talking about ingesting, you know, 20 to 40 mil, 40, 20 to 40 grams of, you know, soy protein isolates, um, on a, in a single serving. And that might be multiple times a day. So this, this really is a far cry from the condiment like intakes of whole fermented soy products in Asian cultures. Uh, so yeah, if you're, if you're concerned about soy, but you love it, you just think, man, I gotta have it. I know these, there's these benefits, then get it fermented. And uh, I would also mention, you know, if your child, your baby, um, or your pediatrician is recommending a soy formula for your child, I would think twice. I would like, maybe I'm gonna find another uh, um, another recommendation. I'm gonna, you know, talk to somebody else about this before I start getting my, my child a bunch of soy-based formulas. Um, you know, that's an entire, entirely new, different top, topic talk. It takes too long to talk about right now. You probably won't hear about that, but I'll, I'll make another one up, talk about soy-based formulas and, uh, you know, their, their true cost to, um, life and longevity for uh, for us bad bad place to go okay so what about wheat you might ask well wheat though it is um you know through its commercial process and everything you know really when they test it they find that look, there's like no lectins left it's so processed it's so um just manipulated that by the time you get to like a little these Pane pastas and those kind of things. It's like we can't even find any more lectins in there, uh, which in itself should tell us, hey, is that something we should be eating if it's processed that much? Um, I will say though, there is um, there's still no food substance that I see patients have more consistent issues with than wheat products, though. So you know what's the deal here? They're um, all the lectins are gone from the processed wheat, and yet you know people are still having untold negative effects from ingestion uh, of wheat, you know, from digestive issues, digestive irritation to eczema, psoriasis, um, autoimmune, you know, full bone activation, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, brain fog, cognitive decline, brain inflammation, you know, excess weight gain, and there's not even any lectins present. That's kind of crazy, right? Uh, I think the like the reason is, and I think there's, there's plenty of research bearing this out, is that wheat has, has such a, um, has become such a nuisance to humanity. Uh, and much of this could be related to the, the herbicide glyphosate that's used in it. Um, it could also be uh, related to the fact that it's been like hybridized, you know, changed 50 plus times. It's not necessarily genetic modification, that's just like put it together with other, other, other wheat grains, trying to make it so that this wheat will last forever, that we can get massive yields of crops and that it'll, you know, have a, have a better shelf life and that kind of thing. But that hybridization, that, that changing, um, over time and time and time and time and time again can make for a product that's just it's no longer natural to humanity and i think that's a that's a big big problem that we're running into with wheat and why it's um even though the lectin content when it's fully processed is um meal for for the most part it's still causing a lot of issues for, for a lot of people so bottom line there is a lot more going on with the foods that mess with uh, humanity, um, with me and you, than just the lectin content, you know, and just getting rid of lectins themselves may not may not be the, you know, the, the whole thing that we need to do. I would also mention that you know if you're eating raw nuts, seeds, beans, lentils, grains, that's a terrible idea. Do not eat those things raw. Uh, the, the, you are sure to have misery in your body. You're sure to have undesirable side effects, symptoms, um, if not immediately, very shortly um, in, in the near future. And so we, we, want to, we want to process our food. We want to sprout it. We want to soak it. We want to heat it. We want to cook it, um, bake it. You know, If it's got lectins in it, it is paramount we do these things to bring down those levels and maximize some of the potential benefits and nutrients in those foods and not have a, you know, a food that's otherwise literally irritating our body with each bite. That is, that's, who wants that, right? So these foods potentially could be awesome, right? They could be a, a stepping stone to better health, vitality, vigor, um, or they potentially could be 
massively massively irritating to us um depending on how they are prepared and um you know the, the total amount we're consuming so feel free if you have any questions about um, preparations of these foods you can put them in the comments below in the comment section and we'll uh happily answer them for you just to make sure if you are eating high lectin foods that you're getting the, the biggest bang from them and not all the after effects because uh just like i was talking to a patient today you know wondering about like man I thought, you know, all these nuts and seeds and all this kind of stuff was super good for you. Um, it's like, yeah, you know what? It is. They are, they have fantastic, they have, they're loaded with, with minerals and nutrients, but, um, you know, they also can be loaded with junk um, as far as, uh, you know, lectin content and irritants for the human body if they're not prepared appropriately, if, they're, if you're not roasting them, um, if you're not soaking them, spriting them, these kind of things. So if you're looking at, you know, all these foods and, you um, the uh you know are they are they a problem for me are they not a problem for me easiest thing you can do is just do an elimination rechallenge diet you know 30 days eliminate all the high lectin foods and then um after 30 days um you can start adding them one by one you know every third day and, and see how it goes and you'll you'll know okay man geez my skin was 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 good and after I started adding them, it's not good, or my digestive system's not functioning well, my brain fog's coming back, all those kind of things. Uh, if you really want to like go for it and have something a little more objective, um, how much of a lectin, how much are lectins affecting me? Then you can do a stool analysis and look at secretory IgA levels. And if you have low secretory IgA levels, then that's going to promote more breakdown of your intestinal barrier, uh, more imbalance of your gut flora, which would also lead to you know lectins likely being doubly um, irritating to your being. So many researchers refer to secretory IgA as kind of our lectin shield, uh, but so many people are deficient in secretory IgA, which is like kind of the general of your immune system in your gut and, and in your microflora. So if you're deficient in secretory IgA, then lectin could be really problematic and you can find that no matter how much um, you know, elimination of lectins occurs, you still end up in a, in a rough position when it comes to uh, uh, lectin intake. And if your level is low of secretory IgA, then you definitely want to get with your doctor, get with your physician and say, hey, what can we do to get these levels up and um, make sure that my digestive tract, my, my intestinal lining is shored up so I'm not having excessive leakiness because there's no human on the planet that won't have some level of leakiness. Um, but that, we don't want to be excessive. That's really where we get in trouble. And uh, you know, work with them, work with a physician to balance that gut flora. And manifest ma you know massive health. It's totally doable. You can accumulate health. It is totally doable. So I'm Dr. Matt. Hope this is helpful. Gives you a little insight on these le on this lectin business because I know it's everywhere. Patients are always asking about it. People are messaging me. I talk to patients about it all the time. And uh, you know it can have massive uh, potential benefits or um, or negative effects on the human body, depending on where you're at in your uh, your health journey and in you know your digestive system. So like, comment, subscribe, let us know um, what you want to hear about and uh, we'll just keep pumping it out.